It is good to be back with you. It is great. I had a lovely drive down this morning and had this whole other talk prepared. And then Friday happened and humanity happened again on Saturday and was up most of the night communing with Howard Thurman and Victor Frankel trying to make sense out of this nonsense. And on the ride down, the talk morphed for two and a half hours. <laughs> so I was raised by a very spiritual grandmother. And my nanny taught me growing up, the only prayer I ever really needed to pray was, Lord, fill my mouth with worthwhile stuff and nudge me hard when I've said enough. <laughs> so that's where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I actually have a little box in my pocket that will nudge me hard when I need to shut up. So, <laughs> What do I trust in? I think I know. And then a group of college students in a peaceful protest of oneness to stand against racism is met with a much larger crowd of torch-bearing white men. Railing against them. Taking a stand for separation. Taking a stand for racism and bigotry. And at my human core, I wonder, what do I trust? Because the reading today from 1919 applies today. And I keep trusting that it's going to change. And it keeps not changing. And I find myself sitting with, what do I trust? And then Saturday happens, where there is another peaceful march, standing in love, for love, for oneness. And they are met with a car crashing through the crowd taking the life of a 32-year-old woman, injuring 19 people. Two law enforcement officers' lives were lost en route to help in that situation. And I sit and I watch my brown wife sleeping. And I wonder, what do I really trust? Because in my mind, Smith & Wesson starts looking like a really good idea to trust. Because I love that person I'm watching sleep. And I'm watching our country visibly, palpably hate her existence simply because of the color of her skin. And I don't have the brain cells to process that because it makes no sense to me. It makes no sense. I don't want to understand it, quite honestly. I don't want to because I don't want to think that way. But what I do want is to understand the people who do think that way. And I don't understand why I want to do that. <laughs> Let's be really clear. I know it's in me. I know it's alive in me. Because I know the only way we're going to heal is to meet in the middle of the wound. Do I trust 
that the same God that lives in me lives in them? Do I really? Do I trust that when I sit down with them, there is something greater speaking and something greater listening? Or am I trusting the physical appearance? Am I showing up with a script in my mind to convince you that you're wrong and I'm right because I'm irritated that you're busy trying to convince the world that you're right and I'm wrong. Not really much difference there, is it? We've just traded seats. What do I really trust? Do I trust that inner voice that I can't explain? That sometimes I can't even articulate what I know. Can I trust that place that as a little kid knew it was a minister and it took me 53 years <laughs> to say yes? And I still don't trust it. Not if I'm being completely honest. I trust around it. <laughs> I trust parts of it. I trust the really cool parts. Like, you know, when my phone lights up and there's a text message from Rev D saying, I want to cover my pulpit. I trust that because that's cool. See, that's cool. <laughs> but when the calling comes to take my ministry to the streets, and I don't mean to the suburbs. <laughs> I was raised in the hood. Okay? Most white folks, please don't take offense, there's none intended, but most of us white folks wouldn't know the street if it bit us in the butt. Okay? We wouldn't. We think a stoplight being out or a street light being out is scary. Okay? It's not. It's just different. You'll be okay. <laughs> Never having a street light in your neighborhood is scary. Knowing that if you see a light, it's not a good thing Amen. is scary. <laughs> Knowing that the light you most don't want to see is a blue one because it could mean you're going to die tonight and you've done nothing is scary. Some of us still live that way. In what do we really trust? Because we in new thought, <laughs> better look and see where the new thought police are coming from. <laughs> we are notorious for spiritual bypass. We, are, we have made it an art form. It's all good. It's all God. It's all God. But I'm not sure it's all good. I think it depends on how we define the word good. Okay. Ernest Holmes, in the Science of Mind textbook, I believe it's page 570 or 370, that's a very clear formula. If what you do brings more life to you, more joy to you, and hurts no one, then it's good. If what you do adds more life at the expense of no one, then it's good. Then it's right. And you are someone. So even if you can look at it and say, well, I'm not hurting anybody else, it doesn't qualify. Because if you're hurting yourself, it's at someone's expense. You matter. See, and until we begin to understand that, until I begin to understand 
that I matter. I can't let you matter. I can't really trust anything that comes out of your mouth until I can trust what comes out of my mouth. Because like it or not, we are always projecting our stuff. And so I know if I'm a liar, I know you are too. You know, it's like in relationships, that place where, well, if they really knew me, they wouldn't like me. And you know why we know that's true? Because we've never showed up to the relationship. Somebody else has been there. I become who you want me to be. I say what you want me to say. I look like you want me to look. Because I don't trust me to show up as me. And I don't trust you to love me. What do we trust? I arrived and I went to the bathroom. <laughs> and I looked up. And the most perfect thing is on the wall. When I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I'm afraid. Trust is not the absence of fear. Trust is the knowing that the fear doesn't matter. Trust is not the absence of fear. It is a knowing that it doesn't matter. If we are eternal beings like we say we are, and we really trust that, we existed before now, <laughs> we exist now, and we will continue to exist beyond what we can wrap our human minds around. Do we trust that, or do we trust this container? What do I really trust? Do I trust this 57-year experience and hope for 20 more? Or do I trust that I am an infinite being, and this is just a blip on the radar? Just a blip. Not even measurable in eternity. Think about it. What do we trust? And if I'm being really honest, until I really dug into this talk, I was real busy trusting this journey, this experience, and what this gift that I've gotten doing this talk is opening to a deeper level, is opening to a place that I hadn't met before, that genuinely has a yes to getting in that pickup truck and going to wherever spirit says stop and ministering to whoever shows up. I don't know how it's going to get paid for. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what it's all going to look like, but I know it won't stop. It isn't going away. There is something deep inside of me. And am I going to trust that? Or am I going to trust the American dream? Am I going to trust that the love between my wife and I is deep enough to navigate what looks like an insane path? At the human level, what I'm being called to do is nuts. It just is. You know, get in your vehicle, go. You don't necessarily have a destination. You're just going to go until Spirit says, stop here. And I have to recognize, because words are funny, and when I say spirit says stop here, it's not some message from outside telling me what to do. It is spirit within. Okay. 
Be really aware of how you use that. Because if you think something outside of you is sending you messages, please go see a psychologist. <laughs> I'm just saying. I ain't judging. <laughs> I'm just saying. We don't get telegrams. We don't get transmissions from the beyond. We are the beyond. There is no separation. We are it within it, individualized as it. Now, that's a lot for our human minds to wrap around. So quit trying to wrap your human mind around it. Wrap your heart around it. Let it wrap you. See, the more we come at spiritual from human, the less we get it. Okay? I want to end with my friend who I've never met in the physical but I've spent many hours with Howard Thurman because it's really easy in these moments of crisis to have that high resolve it's not so easy to sustain it so take this with you the moments of my high resolve Despite the dullness and bareness of the days that pass, if I search with due diligence, I can always find a deposit left by some former radiance. But I had forgotten. At the time, it was full-orbed, glorious, and splendid. I was sure that I would never forget. In the moment of its fullness, I was sure that it would illumine my path for the rest of my journey. I had forgotten how easy it is to forget. There is no intent to betray what seemed so sure at the time. My response was whole, clean, authentic. But little by little, there crept into my life the dust and grit of the journey. Details, lower level demands, all kinds of cross currents. Nothing momentous, nothing overwhelming, nothing flagrant, just wear and tear. If there had been some direct challenge, a clear cut issue, I would have fought to the end and beyond in the quietness of this place. Surrounded by the all pervading presence of God, my heart whispers. Keep fresh before me the moments of my high resolve. That in fair weather or in foul, in good times or in tempest, in the days when the darkness and the foe are nameless or unfamiliar, may I not forget to which my life is committed. Let's take this into prayer. Infinite oneness. The all that there is, the essence of my being, the voice of my soul, one infinite love, one infinite peace, one infinite presence, breath of my breath, beating of my heart. I live within, as, through, this one. It is the very creation of all life, so it must be my life. All that I am, all that I have ever been, what I was before I am now, and what I will be when I am no longer in this form, is that one. And what is true of me is true of all life. And so, in every expression of divinity, whether I can understand or not at the human level, I am connected, I am one with all. And so I set aside my humanity as I stand in it to meet every other human at that place of spiritual integration, at that place of oneness that knows, that it knows we are one. 
and I stand in the wound long enough to navigate to the truth. I trust what is within me is within all life. I am no longer fooled by appearances. I refuse to buy into the lie of effect. Because at cause, we are one. We have always been one. And to participate in anything else is to participate in the lie. And I say no. And as I say no to the lie, I say yes to life. Yes to being all of me. Yes to being terrified and standing in the trust that it's okay to be scared. It just ain't okay to run away. To say yes as I look into another's eyes. To remind my human experience that I am looking into the eyes of divinity to not be fooled by behavior to not be fooled by condition to love at the level of cause to commune at the level of cause to trust at the level of cause that what breathes me breathes you that the heart that beats in me beats in you that the same mind that I know from is the same mind that you know from. That the same love is where we meet. So grateful for this opportunity to be in service. So grateful for this opportunity to step aside and be taught as I teach. Grateful for whatever words got through to me whenever they did to this heart that only knows yes, that trusts that no matter what, I am whole, perfect, and complete. And as I trust that about me, I have to trust that about you. Because we're the only one here. Not ones, one. And so it is in this gratitude, in this place of knowing truth from the inside out. I release my word into that activity of love and law where it came from to begin with, coming full circle. And I invite you, if this resonates in your being, to join me by saying, and so it is. Thank you.